Hi, beautiful souls, and uh, welcome and hello. Uh, I am just coming in live and wanted to share with you one of the things that I've been speaking about. There is a an epidemic, it's a pandemic going around recently. I'm just going to take a little sip from my And one of the things that so many women are calling me about, friends and people that I work with, are calling me about there is this anxiety level that women are having lately. It's like this epidemic in uh, feelings of self-worth and feeling of acknowledgement and anxiety levels and all kinds of things that women are facing right now that they're speaking about but don't feel confident enough speaking in public in a, you know, in a setting that they don't they feel like they're the only ones. And it's really actually epidemic proportions because we have actually, uh, when women are not acknowledging or not having self-confidence or not acknowledging their worth, then they have things like uh, adrenal spikes, cortisol highs, cortisol lows, stress, anxiety, weight gain, all kinds of depression. A lot of things that are going on in the inner world of women that they're actually believing they are the only ones and that they are somehow uh, making it up or neurotic or feeling that they are that they don't have the place or the time in order to say that so I'm here to bust those myths and to give you some keys and practical techniques that the ancients used to do that this is stuff that our grandmothers used to talk about and they pass it on to their granddaughters and mothers to daughters and aunts to nieces and somewhere along the lines we have gotten lost from these ancient rituals that were taught um, in the priestess initiations and in the red tents and in the moon lodges and uh, by the beach sides and anywhere where women would gather and they would talk about these things and teach each other these things. And in our North American world, the largest thing that women are facing right now is an epidemic of adrenal fatigue, cortisol spikes. You know, we're taking on so much, we're taking on the world, we're doing everything. Um, from work to family to, you know, all, all of that. And as much as time has equalized and a lot of men are coming now, like a previous generation, you know, it was unheard of that men would even consider cooking or changing a diaper or anything like that. And as much as they're coming, that's equalized. There's also something, something that women are taking this brunt of having to do it all uh, and having to keep it in line. That's the other thing. Um, you know, this epidemic of women feeling that they are singularly responsible for their own feelings of worth and confidence and acknowledgement, whereby the so many women. So I'm going to give you seven seven <laughs> keys or prescription or things to do this week, tangible things that you can do this week in order to bring you back into that confident feminine vibration, into that magnetic self-worth acknowledged, you know, ways to acknowledge yourself. So number one, uh, there is, you know, we've heard a lot of self-care is about taking bubble baths, but in fact, uh, baths or immersion in water is an actual Ayurvedic ancient technique because water has in it uh, negative ions and we are surrounded with electromagnetic frequency with a lot of positive ions. So immersing in a body of water, in, such as a bath that has essential oils and salts and candles and that immersive experience does a few things. For one, it tells, it sends the message to your cells and to yourself that you are worth it, that you are uh, acknowledged that you have this you know, worth that it takes that time. And you need to do that about three times, uh, three times a week for 30 minutes. Because especially when you're in stress mode, you know, otherwise, if you don't have time to bathe, to take a bath for 30 minutes, three times a week, then do an Ayurvedic massage, self massage, so that you're sending a message to your cells that you have this time. As your stress levels go up, then what happens is your cortisol spikes, your youth hormones uh, deplete, your ability to digest depletes, your, your human growth hormone create, you know, you're not developing human growth hormones, so you're creating wrinkles, uh, all of that sort of that beauty supply. And it's got nothing really to do with the amount of time, three, 30 minutes, um, three times a week, except that it's sending that not only to yourselves, but also to everyone around you. You know, you are an expression of everything that you do. If you want to know what's important to you, see how you spend your biggest commodity, which is time. 
And the second thing is how you spend your money. That shows what you're, what's important to you. And it shows everyone else what's important to you. So if you're not willing to take 30 minutes three times a week for either an immersive bath, which is very re replenishing, um, or an Ayurvedic self-massage, self-oil massage. So that's prescription number one. Uh, it is the key. It is something that was done in the ancient temple. Priestesses would do it all the time, this immersive bath. Um, very often they would do it in hammams or community elements, um, the ritual baths. Uh, so this is an ancient technique that we have lost. I'm not suggesting that you go to an, a community bath unless you want to. You could very well do it in public or in private. But um, definitely the candles and the oils and the salt, it's very important. Then the next key or uh, prescription is your breath. You know, so often we have this parasympathetic nervous system that when we breathe, um, very shallow breathing or, you know, then what happens is we actually trick our body into the stress response. We're actually alerting the lizard brain that we actually have some fear or some sort of stimulus that is about to, um, you know, like the fight or flight response. We're about to actually become, you know, there's a saber tooth tiger or something imminent threat. And that's the kind of breathing that we do. You could even try it. If you just think to yourself for a few minutes, try very high, shallow breathing, you're actually going to start feeling nervous. And instead, if you do that diaphragmatic breathing in my, in the course that I'm running online, I actually have all the different kinds of breath that you can do to release each of the energy centers. Um, and it's a little bit too much to go into in this video, but eventually in other videos, I'll come in with singular breaths that open up and balance your different energy centers and a kind of breath and the kind of focus that you have in that breath. But what you want to do is actually uh, release that trigger from the parasympathetic nervous system so that your breathing brings you into a state of calm. How, has the body relax into the breath, you know, have you focus on where your breathing is coming from. And then that really shifts you into this feeling of calm and self-worth and acknowledgement and, um, you know, confidence. Uh, the third key or prescription is to nourish your body. You know, so often, so many people are running around. I get it. I'm busy too. But, you know, you're running around eating things that are on the go and cheaply made and you don't give it an, any second thought. And that's exactly the message that you're sending to your cells when you do that, that uh, you're not worth thinking about, that you're not worth being nourished, that you are on the go. It is exactly the way that your cells are going to communicate the way that you're communicating to them. Cells need to be nourished and handled and babied and cared for and caressed just like you so that they send it back to you you are nourished and acknowledged and, and cared for and allow you to be nourished in every aspect of your life. Uh, and the fourth key or prescription is what I like to call the uh, sacred spiral movement or sacred sensual movement. So in all traditions, like, so nature moves in curves and in spirals and in circles and in all traditions, uh, have always recognized that women are the embodiment of that nature. You know, that whole yin yang, women are chaos, women are the universe. We are spiral in nature. We are uh, circular in nature. And all the traditions from every segment of life have recognized that there's a cer certain kind of movement that is circular that is traditionally limited to the feminine. So whether that be hula in um, Hawaiian um, or or flamenco in that sort of Spanish Portuguese region or belly dance coming from uh, Middle East and North Africa you know every single tradition has a kind of a dance that opens up the hips in this circular motion uh, the figure eight mimicking the earth motion and we really need that I, the number one thing that happens to women as we get older is that our hips freeze up, we fall down, we break a hip. That's usually the first thing that happens to women as they start aging and the first thing that lands them in the hospital in, in a, an aging, uh, in a more progressive age. And so what we have to do as we're in our younger and able years is open up those hips. It allows for um, a, a massage within that ovarian 
uh, reproductive area, allows for movement, allows for vibration there. So that increases our sensual response, that increases our blood flow to that area, makes us more aroused, make us, makes us more turned on, makes us more um, juicy and, and able to like having a joie de vivre because we're opening up something that opens up that estrogen progesterone response, the endocrinal gland that comes with the ovaries that really makes us come alive. And then that also brings down our cortisol levels, um, which again triggers that human growth hormone and uh, all that that comes with that court, lowering the cortisol or balancing the cortisol because too little cortisol uh, means that you're depleted. Uh, so it's not always the case that we have too much cortisol. It may be that we've completely run out of cortisol and haven't replenished. Uh, number five of the prescriptions and keys to reclaiming your feminine confidence or your goddess nature or your worth or your value in the world is to find your sheroes. Find the wise women who have come before you. Find those mentors the secret, the sacred teachings, uh, all those spiritual teachings from time before. And if you don't have someone like that in your community or that you know, no problem. Read about them. There's a wealth of information from a lot of different women in the world who have had this before us. Yes, ask yourself that every day. Who have passed before us, who um, you can read about, who you can see. Cleopatra's very Marilyn Monroe, for instance, uh, was, uh, although a tragic figure in her life, she was a woman who actually embodied and embraced a lot of those spiritual teachings. And there are actual, there is actual documented evidence that she studied under a feminine mystery school. She had her own mentors in her life, that brought her from Norma Jean into Marilyn Monroe. So uh, I'll be coming, uh, this is one of my personal pursuits. I love showcasing the sheroes that came before us. So I have, I always come with new information about women who have come before us, what they knew, what it is that they possessed, what this knowledge is that they gleaned and learning from them. But that is a great way to, uh, to raise your confidence levels, to reclaim your confidence in your feminine fire. Because when you start seeing what these women previously what they had accomplished in their life, you can see that they actually had the same uh, anxiety, the same questions, the same struggles, the same challenges as we did, or as you might be feeling that you do. And it allows you to see that in fact, whatever it is that you're battling is actually universal. There's actually a universal energy for us, you know, for women about that question of worth. Um, and acknowledgement and it's one of the universal human drives and more so with women than with men is that peace around acknowledgement about being acknowledged being desired being wanted being you know being seen um universally and especially with women uh number six you gotta cut out any negative people or influences in your life i know that that's really hard to do and you're saying to me well what about family um you know so or, or colleagues, people who you work with, and you can't cut them out, and I, I get that. One of the things that really, your life improves in a moment, in a flash, is knowing the difference between someone's opinion and fact. Just separating between that is a singular step towards your own self-worth and your own wisdom. Knowing the difference between someone's opinion, which they're entitled to, and that is their opinion, and knowing what it is that you know, what it is that is fact for you. That singular distinction can make the difference between you knowing exactly what you're bringing to the table and what it is that is uh that is robbing you of your worth and your value and your self-confidence. If you have negative people in your life who are determined to bring down your value and your worth uh, and your confidence and determined to see you not shine your light, know that that is their opinion, that that is their opinion. That is not fact. Whatever it is that they're rooted in, whatever it is that's having them claim that opinion for whatever reason in their life, it has to do with you and everything to do with them. So um, adding those cords and yourself to live free of that empathic role that women take that, that, uh, you know, high 
funny, sensitive woman that has someone who feels that she wants to be liked and that it's not a determination of your worth or your value or your confidence. It's that are not necessarily uh, a return on investment or in or uh, that have you feeling the thing believe that you are less than, you'll start to see your greatness through their eyes. Find yourself a tribe, find yourself a sisterhood, find yourself a coven. I mean, whatever floats your boat, find yourself, your people that you can sing energetically with, that you can, that you can vibe with. 100% important. It'll change your life in an instant. It'll have you have instant uh, confidence and worth and value and all the beautiful things that you are. Lower your stress response, heighten your enjoyment, and you will have serotonin, dopamine, uh, you know, all of your endocrinal glands will be balanced, all your chakras will be balanced, you'll have, you know, you'll be full and alive and thriving. And of course, who won't have confidence when you're feeling that confident and that ready to take on your goddess nature? Until next time, goddesses, thank you very much. Until next time, be bold, be brave, be beautiful, and be you.